This episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Welcome back. So as you know, I'm trying to recreate my very own socket ratchet wrench. Here is the original, and on the last episode, out of our Damascus steel, we did all of the holes that were required from the A side. We're now going to be flipping it over and doing what's required on the B side, which includes this triangular inset, as well as two countersunk holes. The DRO is going to be very useful for this, but we are also going to need to use one of our new bits of tooling. So the plan is for me to use the three jaw chuck on this indexing head to be able to spin it to the angles that's required to mill our triangle. And hopefully we don't lose all of our machinist viewers because of how sketchy it is to put this in the three jaw chuck like this. Yeah. Next up, we're gonna be putting it in the lathe to make it nice and ergonomic, and also get the surface finish we need for etching the Damascus. And now's a good time to talk about today's sponsor, which is Bespoke Post. It's a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of killer gear from under the radar brands. The first thing we can look at is their Scorched Kit. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products like outdoor gear, hardware, home and kitchen goods, or as you can see here, very, very hot chili sauces. So Jamie's put some hot sauces on the crackers for me to try while I open up the other boxes we've got. Right, here we go, nothing to it but to do it. It's going fine. <laughs> so this is the two. <laughs> This is the tooled box. Oh, brilliant. We've got ourselves a nice little flashlight. I like this, a hex drive toolkit. Oh, now that is a really handy little tool to have. Next cracker, here we go. Oh, it's orange. Super practical if you're camping. Little paracord bracelet. Here we go. The next box is the fixed kit. Mm. Look at that. A camp carabiner, a seat, an awesome SOG knife, and reusable zip ties. Ah, oh, here's go. Last one. Every single bespoke post box has $70 of value of worth of stuff, but costs a fraction of the price. Becoming a Bespoke Post member is free. You can pick the boxes that you get. They've always got an awesome range of stuff. Please go get 20% off your first Bespoke Post box by clicking my link in the description and using code FORGE at checkout. Mm. So right now, it's rocking almost an acceptable 120 grit surface finish. What I'm doing is horrifying. I've seen enough very tragic videos of people getting hurt in lathes, and when I say hurt, I mean killed, to know that this is the most dangerous tool in the workshop. And anybody that has even a small little lathe at home is playing with just utter terror and devastation right at your fingertips and right by you. This thing can so easily kill me, it's not even funny. And it is also so much easier for it to kill me when we have this little flexible bit of belt that we are hanging on to. What are some of the things that I'm trying to do to mean that I don't die? Well, when I turn the lathe on, I'm holding this very loosely. And when I'm putting pressure, I'm trying to put my body weight behind me so that if something happens, I fall off the pliers rather than go into the lathe. And I'm constantly telling myself, let go of the pliers if something happens. Let go of the pliers if something happens. Because an instinct for us as humans is that if something's getting out of our hands, we grip on tighter. So I'm trying to combat that instinct by telling myself, if this wants to come out of my hands, it's gone. I don't want it anymore. It's yours, lathe. Enjoy it. Let's finish up this surface finish and start going up grits. The feature we're now gonna work on is this hole that holds a ball and a spring. And this is gonna be challenging to set up and to drill. So, let's see if we can work out the angle. <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> no, that's not accurate. Okay, okay. 24 degrees. Hmm. Ah. 
and my mill is not big enough. Okay. The mill is currently at its lowest point. My ideal scenario is not going to work. We've got to put this on the table. So out come our glorious octane. What? Do you want to calculate to see if it's even going to be enough? without the vice. Good idea. You know what, Jamie? Uh, I was actually going to do that. It was a test. <laughs> Just to see if you were on the ball and paying attention. Thank you, Jamie. All right, how about that? Close. Is it challenging? No. There's no, there's no chance, is there? Look at that. So it's not like I took on a project like this, thinking everything was going to be fine and dandy and it's all going to go really well and super easy. I did it specifically for a challenge. Yay, challenge yourself, grow. Grow as a human being and as a person. Develop your inner strength and feel confident. Yep, that's right. So we're going to develop my inner strength uh, by making something that makes this work. You see, the quill hits this. I could cut that off, but then the quill is gonna be hitting this. And I might need to put it back in the lathe, so I don't wanna cut it off until I know I can cut it off. So, in order to get my drill to go down further, I need the drill to be longer. But the drill is only that big. You might say, Alec, why don't you just use a big old spaghetti drill like this? The reason is, we're trying to drill at an angle. And a drill bit of this geometry doesn't like going in at an angle, because it's gonna wobble and the point isn't gonna cut. You'll note the geometry of these drills is different. It's stubbier, it has a different point angle, and because it's made of carbide, it's very rigid, which means it can start cutting on the edge of the drill without getting deviated from its center line. So, what I need to do is make an arbor that is thin enough to give me clearance, but thick enough to mean that there is still rigidity in the cutting tool, and it'll poke this down, we'll clamp this into the arbor, and hopefully be able to drill the hole. Okay, the profile shot for when you go out the other side. Thank you, Jamie, I appreciate that. What was that? Oh! We were just stopped moving the table and we heard a big bang. <laughs> and then the, the drill bits disappeared. Jamie, if I snap that thing in the f***ing <laughs> hole, I will be mildly upset and I will have to take it out. Is it in the hole? No. You're very, very lucky. So now we need to open up the hole to five millimeters. And we fortunately made a five millimeter hole on the other side of the arbor. The old double-ended arbor. You know where I picked up this trick? The, uh... Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, that's some serious deflection. Okay, I think we got the hole done. Perfection. So now we get to do the actual test assembly of all the components. This little spring goes in our angled hole. <gasps> it makes the noise! I love it. Ooh. That is a functioning socket wrench. At least the body of it is ours. I still want to make all the inner component parts, but what's exciting is we can now finally shape the head of this thing and get it finished up. I am absolutely in love with how this is looking. It's ready for etch. As you can see, I did make it a little bit longer because when you're making your own tool, you might as well add on a couple inches. We're gonna save the etching for later because for now, we've got a whole box of little interesting component parts to make. We've got teeth to cut, springs to spring. Oh, frick, I lost it. <sighs> we just spent 10 minutes looking for the spring. It's definitely gone, so we definitely have to make a new spring. Please go check out today's sponsor, which was Bespoke Post. There is a link down below for you to check out and get a special deal. This is all we have time for on this episode. I can't wait to see you on the next one. And I do hope you also go check out 
the Alex Steel Co. to check out some of the cool products we have. We now have pants back in stock in bison color as well as our new black espresso color. We struggled to find a name because it's not a black, black, black. It's got a hint of color in it. So black espresso is what we settled on. Please go check them out. We're sure you'll love them. Thank you and bye-bye.